Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin, Lecture in Computing at the National College of Ireland and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video, we're going to learn how to calculate students' t-statistic for dependent samples in Excel 2010 using Excel's data analysis tools. So before we start, let's take a look at some data. Over here on the left-hand side, I've got two columns of data, the test scores for a pretest and the test scores for the post-test. And it's the difference between these two test score, sets of test scores that is the emphasis or the focus of what we're trying to do here. Our participants are being tested more than once and there are two groups of scores. And this means that the appropriate test statistic is the t-test for dependent or paired samples. Now, over on my right-hand side here in the pink box, I've got a formula uh, that we use for calculating the paired or dependent t-value. Now, we're not going to use this formula in this particular exercise, but remember, uh, if you're a student in particular, you may need to know how to uh, use this formula, how to calculate uh, d and n in this formula. And if you click on the box that's popped up on your screen now, uh, that will take you to one of my videos that will show you how to use this formula. In this um, video here, we're going to use Excel's own data analysis tools. Let's first of all set out our null hypothesis. Here in column D in the blue box, I've set out my HO, which is the um, um, null hypothesis, and our hypothesis here is that there's no difference between the means. We express that as HO, mu of the post-test, that's the population mean of the post-test, is the same as the population mean of the pre-test. In other words, there's no difference between the means. That's our null hypothesis. And our alternative hypothesis, which we're setting out to prove, is that the mean of the sample here of the post-test is greater than the mean of the sample for the pre-test. And we're going to test this at an alpha value of 0.05 or at the 95% significance level. So before we can uh, use Excel's data analysis tools, we've got to switch them on. Now, if you, you may have this switched on already, so I'll go through this fairly quickly. We need to click on the file ribbon across the top over here and select second from the bottom, the options button. This displays the Excel options uh, for your installation of Excel. The option we're looking for here is the add-in, second from the end, so click on that. And down at the bottom of the uh, screen here, you can see that there's an option to manage Excel add-ins. Click on the Go button to the right of that option. And what that will do is it'll display a list of add-ins. Uh, it may be different in your version of Excel. The one we're looking for here is the first one uh, that's unchecked in my version. It's the Analysis Toolback tool pack. If that's already checked in your version, just leave it uh, checked and click on the OK button. Now what that does is, if you click on the data ribbon across the top of Excel here, is that it has inserted at the right side of the data ribbon a data analysis uh, option here. And that will allow us to do uh, the t-test that we want. So let's go ahead and click on the data analysis option here. Now this brings up several different data uh, analysis tools, different, different statistical tests that you can see here. And if you scroll down to the very end, you will see options for t-tests. Now you can see uh, that there are three options here. And because we are testing for a paired or dependent t-test, the one we need is the first one here, a t-test for paired two sample uh, for means. That's the one we're looking for. So click on OK. Now that brings up the uh, t-test paired for two sample uh, for means window. And we need to input some values here. Now we're comparing the pre and post tests, so let's um, um, create the value for the first value here. So I'm going to select uh, all my items, including the label here in column A. That's going into variable 1. And as you would expect, variable 2 is going to be all the items, including the label, in column B. Or I could type these in manually should I choose. The next option to put in here is the hypothesized mean difference. So we're hypothesizing that there's no difference between the means. So I'm just going to put in a zero value there, or you could leave it blank. I have selected the labels in the, uh, my data range, so I want to check the labels box so that the labels are not counted in the calculations. The alpha value, which uh, I'm testing at the 0.05 level, is defaults to that value here, so I don't need to change that. If you're testing at 10% uh, or 1%, uh, maybe you might need to change that. And I'd like my output to be on this exact same screen here, so I'm going to check on the output range button. And then in the box to the right-hand side, remember to click into that box, I'm going to select a place on the screen. I'm going to choose column D13 uh, to, in, to display the output of my t-test and click OK. We can see here um, some details for the pre- and post-test. We've got our means and variance and so on that Excel calculates for us. 
The statistic that we're most in search of is this one down here in the middle for the t-stat, a value of minus 2.449. Now, had we used the formula that's up here at the top and filled in the values, we would get exactly the same result as you see here. The result for the, com the formula would be minus 2.449. And that value then is going to tell us whether there is a significant difference between our pre and our post test. So now we need to compare that value to a set of tables. So in another window here, uh, I've got uh, my T tables listed. And this T table is taken from Wikipedia. And there's two things we need to know. Across the top, we need to know whether it's a one or two tail test and which value we're testing for. And down along the left hand side here, you can see some numbers. This is going to be the degrees of freedom. Now from our table over here, we can see in the middle that the degrees of freedom is 24. Uh, it's calculated by n minus 1, so we can see our observations is 25. We have 25 pairs of data, so our degrees of freedom is n minus 1. So that means then we're going to be looking across the line here with 24. So somewhere along this line that I've highlighted in blue here is the critical value for our test. Next, we need to determine whether it's a one-sided or two-sided test, or one or two tails. And because our alternate hypothesis is that the mean of the post-test is greater than the mean of the pre-test, it means that it's a one-sided or one-tail test. An alpha value of 0 0.05 means we're testing at the 95% significance level. So I've highlighted 95% at the top. So this column, where it bisects the uh, 24 degrees of freedom, is at a critical value of 1.711. Now, this works on either side and either tail, so a critical value of minus 1.711 is what we're looking for here. And if our t-statistic, and we can see in our results in Excel here, is that our t-statistic of minus 2.449, that's greater than our critical value. Therefore, it falls into the reject region on our distribution, and we reject the null hypothesis that there's no difference between the means in favor of the alternate hypothesis that the mean of the post-test is greater than the mean of the pre-test. We can also see in our tables over here uh, on our output that a p-value, a probability value of 0 0.01, if that value is less than our alpha value of 0 0.05, which it is, it means we can also reject the null hypothesis as well. So that's how you conduct a uh, calculated t-statistic for uh, paired or dependent uh, means uh, using Excel's analysis tools. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.